Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to dip into the world of digital electronics again and we're going to take a look at some of the classic logic gates and we're going to see if we can turn those truth tables that are so beloved of textbooks into something that we can actually see and hopefully understand a little bit better. So let's start by having a look at the gates themselves. Today we're going to look at a number of logic gates. The first one is the AND gate. It has the truth table as illustrated there. And the uh, easy way to remember the AND gate is that um, if both input A and B are high, then the output will be high. Otherwise the output's always low. The NAND gate is the complete opposite of the AND gate. It's a NOT AND gate and so the result of the truth table is uh, is reversed. The OR gate um, has the symbol with the uh, with the curve in it so it's easy to identify and with an OR gate you get a if both inputs are low the output is low and if either of the inputs or both of the inputs are higher then the output is high. The NOR gate again uh, distinguished from the OR gate by the circle indicating inversion is actually the opposite of the OR gate, it's a NOT OR and the EOR or exclusive OR gate is a little bit different and truth table produced there so if both inputs are low output is low, both inputs are high output is also low but in the case of either of the inputs being high while the other is low then both outputs are high I'm not going to look at it today but for completeness I'm just going to include the NOT gate which we've covered before on a couple of videos and essentially the NOT gate is an inverter so if the input's low the output will be high and if the output's high the input uh, will be low. Okay those are the gates that um, we're going to look at and what I've done is I've built each circuit onto the breadboard and I've got LEDs configured for the inputs and an LED for the output so that when inputs or outputs are low the LED is off and when the output is high the LED is on so we can hopefully visualize exactly what's going to go on with the truth tables so let's work our way through the gate starting with AND okay here's the setup for the AND gate the truth table looks like this uh, with both inputs low the output is also low second input high, output low, first input high, output still low, both together, output is high. So that's the AND gate. This then is the NAND gate and you can see the truth table here. So with both inputs low the output is high, second input high, output still high, first input high, output still high, both inputs high, output goes low. So it is indeed agreeing with the not and, which is what the NAND really means. Gate. So with both inputs low, the output is low. With either of the inputs high, the output goes high, and with both inputs high, the output is high again. That's the OR gate. This is the setup for the NOR gate. Uh, here's the truth table. So as you can see, with both inputs low, the output is high. So with um, first input low, second input high, output goes low. And first input high out and second input low, we get an output that's also low. And then finally both together gives us a low output. And this is the exclusive OR. So truth table thus. Both inputs low, output is low, second input high, output goes high, first input high, output also goes high, both together, so both inputs high, output is low. So that's the EOR or exclusive OR. Okay, those are the gates um, that we've worked through them in order as per the slides at the start. Um, but I just want to take you back to the AND gate for a moment, here's a picture of it. And if you're really paying attention, you might notice that actually that isn't an AND gate. That's actually NAND gate, and I've got it configured as an AND gate. So let's just have a quick look um, how the circuit diagram looks for that. 
the NAND often called the universal gate um, in this uh, configuration we have a NAND gate followed immediately by a NOT gate and if you recall from previous slides the NAND gate is actually the opposite of an AND gate it's a NOT AND so if we simply invert the output the result is an AND gate um, and the chip I'm using there is the 74LS00 which is a quad NAND gate and I'm just using the bottom two gates in this case and I've simply connected them thus so inputs A and B are into the first NAND gate the output of that NAND gate connected directly to the two inputs of the second NAND gate and the output S uh, the result uh, the resultant truth table is the same as an AND okay well all this discussion of logic gates is um, in a sense academic because we're talking about them in isolation so um, do they get used well the answer is of course they get used they get used all the time there's tens of thousands of them in pretty much every electronic device we possess these days you know smartphones computers whatever they're, they're everywhere so let's just have a look at the practical application and rather than um, get too confused and I'm actually going to go back to um, how they were used in the 1980s with 8-bit computers so let's just take a look at that okay I'm going to take you back in time I'm going to take you actually back to week 36 of 1984 and this is uh, a 6502 microprocessor chip from my heritage chips collection and I've picked on uh, this chip because uh, it was the one that was in computers such as the BBC Micro uh, and also a very similar chip was in the, the VIC-20, the, the Apple and also the Commodore 64 so it was a very popular processor uh, back in the 80s so the 6502 then um, is an 8-bit eight eight microprocessor and what I want to do is just um, show you how, how occasionally you can use gates to configure a, a microprocessor so here's a, a snippet of the BBC Micro's circuit diagram and the square block in the center is the 6502 microprocessor so let's just have a look at a couple of the um, of the pins and how they're being used first of all just to show you uh, uh, logic in action we've got two pins pins 4 and 6 are IRQ and NMI uh, and they are as per the red box in the center there now they've both got a bar above them which means those uh, those pins are active low now they're both inputs to the processor and if you take either of those pins low it will cause the processor to stop what it's doing and take um, uh, a different action in actual fact what actually happens is when you take either of those pins low the processor in instantly jumps to a, a memory vector and it looks there for some code that you um, have created to handle uh, the interrupt NMI standing for non maskable interrupt and IRQ standing for interrupt request uh, I suspect the clue is slightly in the name there the interrupt request um, it's possible for the processor to ignore sometimes if you tell it to but the non-maskable interrupt uh, can't be ignored and the processor will respond to that no matter what um, so if there's some incoming data which uh, time implications mean you simply can't wait for the processor needs to take action immediately so taking the NMI low would result in that action occurring and the reason I've highlighted that is you can see both of those lines are tied to 5 volts through 3.3k resistors so they're tied high and uh, depending on what's going on with uh, the program or the situation and the computer's dealing with if either of those goes low then the processor takes the appropriate action okay up on the opposite side there we've got um, the read write pin with a bar above the W so that's an output pin uh, so that pin is high when the processor is reading from the data bus and it goes low when it's writing and if you look at the bottom middle there you can see um, the read bar W pin uh, and it comes straight out into, pair, into a pair of um, inverter gates, not gates I see 33, uh, two parts of it and what we're doing there is we're inverting the output so we've got a, a bar R 
slash stroke w but then we've got a second inversion that sort of sets it back to its original r bar w we've clearly somewhere on the bbc micro got chips that need read to be low and some and write to be high and uh, the opposite so both of those lines are available why they inverted the signal as soon as it comes out of the processor there's clearly a, a design implication there that I'm not familiar with maybe it was so the signals looked very similar coming out of the 74 LS04 but that's a nice example of uh, two NOT gates being used there to to provide signals as appropriate for other bits of the circuit I've labeled up um, a few of the gates for you there there's plenty of them the BBC micro circuit board was festooned with um, with logic chips so it's a, a nice example to use and we've got and or nor not and nand um, just draw your attention to ic25 which is in the top left hand quadrant of the circuit board there a 74 ls20 now that's a nand gate but it appears to have four inputs uh, and indeed it has got four inputs that's a slightly different version of a nand gate the 74 ls20 was a dual four input NAND gate and I'll let you look up the truth table for that if you're if you're interested and as you can see pin 13 has been has been tied high but there was clearly the requirement for a four input NAND gate there so that's um, that's how gates get used and there was certainly plenty of them in the BBC micro okay well we've looked at logic gates we've hopefully seen how their truth tables actually work in practice uh, we've also noted again and I've mentioned that in previous videos which might, you might be worth having a look at that the NAND gate is particularly useful because it can be configured um, to produce many combinations of gate if required and indeed you've, you've seen that in this video hopefully as well we've managed to make the um, gates come alive by showing you practical application as uh, in the use in the BBC micro and there are many many others and I'm sure you can probably think of a few so I hope that's been useful if you've liked the video please click thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down It'd be great if you could subscribe you might want to consider also clicking on the bell icon that way you'll get noticed notified when uh, I post new videos which is usually uh, every Wednesday thanks very much for watching we'll see you on the next one